All right, so we're gonna go ahead and draw some muscles of the back. So again, I'll remind you guys, you can print these off of the website. They're there for free. You can just print off any of these images you want to review yourself. I think this is literally the best way that you can do it. What I would suggest you do is think about it in order. So you're going from superficial to deep or deep to superficial, one way or the other. Just think about putting your hands on the back of a patient and what are the structures below my hands at that location. Usually the easiest place to start to give you guys some confidence is gonna be muscles that you know really easily. So things like trapezius might be a good start. So who can give me all the origins of trapezius? So yeah, sit up at the top. So it's EOP, so I don't mind the EOP. Superior nuchal line. Okay, then what? Nuchal ligament all the way down to C7. Then? All together now, spinous processes. T1 all the way down to T12. And then you're going to run up. What's the insertion for the trapezius? <laughs> Alright, so you guys, yep. So all I'm doing is just drawing simple lines that come over. So what do we have to remember? We have to remember our gang sign. Did I give this one to you guys yet or not? Okay, so it's your gang sign. The insertion points are, you wrap that C over top of your shoulder and your thumb attaches to exactly the insertion points. Lateral third of the clavicle, spine of the scapula is the index finger, and then a chromion is where the palm of your hand is. That's literally where your traps go. So you guys can break it down into middle and upper traps. One of the key things when you're drawing this though is make sure you know the fiber directions on how this muscle runs so you can see a nice traps like that. Okay, what are the actions for trapezius? By far and away its two main actions are elevation of the scapula and retraction of the scapula bilaterally, but what if your scapulas stay where they are? Extension. Extension of the neck if you're in a prone position, okay? All right, not quite like that, Tim. Not twitching, okay? All right, so that's trapezius. What's the next muscle that we should probably go? So if I do trapezius, what's deep to that? We could do rhomboids or we could go down here to latissimus. Okay, let's go down to latissimus here. Keep these big flat muscles out of the way. So what are the origination points for latissimus? So iliac crest, base of the sacrum, thoracolumbar fascia, T7 to approximately L5 is what I would say. So just branch it down like that. So say roughly T7 down to L5. And then your fibers, where does it run up to? So it goes to, uh, well it can attach the inferior angle of the scapula, sometimes it varies though. Okay, what else does it do? <laughs> Bicipital groove of? Okay, yeah, medial, medial, not middle, medial lip, medial lip of the bicipital groove, okay? All right, and my favorite question that was ever asked in class, what are the actions of the latissimus dorsi? Extension. Okay. Adduction, extension, and medial rotation of the glenohumeral joint. And I would say it in that order. Adduction by far is the main action. Extension is another main action. And then internal, internal rotation is a weak action. Okay? But it still does that. Yep. What's that? Questions? No? No, okay. All right. Yeah, go ahead, Deb. No, somebody ripped my hair. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, somebody, there's only one person behind here. Okay, oh, okay. What? Okay, making stuff up. Alright. Okay, let's go ahead and move on. So, what are some other muscles in the back that I should know probably? Uh, well, yeah, let's go, like, keep it in order, right, when you're doing this stuff. So, let's go ahead and say levator scap, right? So, levator scap, where does it originate from? Transverse process is C1, C2, C3, C4. And it kind of spirals around and down. And where does it insert? Superior and a little bit of the medial part of the scapula. Yeah, superior medial border of the scapula, running up like that. Okay, so that's going to be levator scap. All right, what's the next muscle? You're on the medial border of the scapula. Might as well stick with it. Rhomboids. Rhomboid minor and major. What do I have to get there? C7, T1 is going to be? Rhomboid minor. Okay, T2 to T5-ish, there's some variation on this, is going to be rhomboid major. What's the main action of your rhomboid muscles? Retraction of the scapula and kind of a more minor action. They do elevate a little bit, but they also do, they also help with downward rotation just a little bit because of the way the fibers run, okay? All right, and if I go deep to the deep to the rhomboids, where do I wind up? And actually, sorry, one other thing I'll say really quick for the nerve innervation too. What is it for trapezius? Spinal accessory, especially for the upper fibers, latissimus. 
Correct. Thoracodorsal, levator scap, rhomboid minor, and major are all the same. That's why you draw them together. Dorsal scapular nerve, okay? All right, then we would go through our erector spinae. But before I get there, I want to make sure we get the most important muscle in all of anatomy, quadratus lumborum, okay? All right, platysma is up here with it and quadratus lumborum down there. What are the origins and insertions of quadratus lumborum? So iliac crest. Iliolumbar ligament, which is going to be down in this space. Transverse processes of? L1 to L5, and then what? Okay, and then it comes off the bottom of rib 12, and you can basically draw fibers that are running down in this direction. There's more specifics where some of the fibers that are deeper may run in slightly different directions if you look at the different heads, but something like that is going to be quadratus lumborum. I've shown you on cadaver dissection how if I drew it way out here, that would be in error. It is not that big. It's just barely lateral to the erector spinae, and that's consistent on hundreds of cadaver dissections I've done. Okay, what else? After QL, then where are we going to go? We could go erectors, or what do you say we go deep first? Okay, why don't we go ahead and start off? What's deeper than multifidi, though? Rotatory. So what do I have to remember for rotatories? One little, two little. <laughs> okay, one little, two little, three little. Okay, so one little, two little. Rotatories. What does that mean? It goes from transverse process to spinous process, one to two segments above. One to two segments above. And that carries all the way up to what spinal level? Actually, all the way up to C2. Okay, up all the way up to C2. Okay, good confidence though. All right. Okay, and then if I go above, if I go above my uh, multifidi, then what's superficial to those? Sorry, my rotatories? What's superficial to those? Okay, multifidi. And what do multifidi do? Three little, four little. So they're running a little bit more obliquely up and down the spine, right? And then if I go superficial to those, what do I run into? Semispinalis. And semispinalis jump? Five to six, five to six, all the way up. So you can see changes in layers from rotatories to multifidi to semispinalis. All those together make up the Trans transversal spinalis. All right. Then if we look at the layer above that, what do I find? Erector spinae, which is? Iliocostalis, longissimus, and spinalis. Let's focus on the most medial one, which is going to be spinalis. And make sure you say the name out loud. Spinalis is erector spinae. Semispinalis is transversal spinalis. So what do I have to know for the spinalis muscle? Is there a cervical region? Yes. yes. Is there a capitis region? Yes, spinalis, spinalis has a capitis region, okay? All right, yes. Okay, spinalis has a capitis region that runs all the way up. Okay, and it's gonna sit right next to this region. I know, hey, that's why we're doing this stuff, okay? So we run down, and where does it sit? Why does the name spinalis work? Spinous it's process. right next to the spinous process, basically running up and down like that. All right, so the next one that's going to be a little bit lateral to that is going to be longissimus. Does longissimus have a capitis region? Yeah. Yes, it does. Where does it attach? This is one that people always forget. It actually comes right up here off the back of the mastoid process and runs down and in. Okay, and continues the rest of the way down, and it goes all the way down to... Uh, it does eventually get to the sacrum through thoracolumbar lumbar fascia, but it stays superficial mainly into the thoracic region and, lum and a little bit into the lumbar, but not very much. The last one is going to be iliocostalis. Does it have a capitis region? No. No, it doesn't. It does not run up to the head. So iliocostalis winds up going into the, th the thoracic region and kind of filling up this space right here. Okay. What does it have that's different though? It runs all the way down into that lumbar spine. So there's a little shift, right? It goes iliocostalis here, and then the other two shift up longissimus and spinalis shift up a little bit further, okay? All right, those are your rector spinae right there. And again, remember there'd be thoracal lumbar fascia and then of course the transversal spinalis deep to those. What is superficial to the rector spinae? Splenius, splenius would be, yeah. So what do I have to know for splenius? Capitus and cervices. How do we remember splenius? Splenius. Splenius, splenius. It comes out at 45 degrees. Well, not 45, but about 60 degrees from the vertical plane. So what is it doing? It's wrapping around the back of the neck like this, and it's wrapping up to the back of the head like that. Okay? So that's going to be splenius coming up right there. And what else is superficial to the erector spinae? Two, two small ones we're missing. Straightus posterior superior and straightus posterior inferior. So you would take those two muscles and draw them just a little bit superficial above. 
okay? And a little bit superficial below. Remember I've shown you in cadaver dissections how thick are these muscles? They are thin, thin. They are like a millimeter thick, but they do actually technically help lift the ribs up a little bit, sorry. Okay, what else could I draw on this picture if I wanted to be a little bit more complete? Should maybe talk about muscles on the back of the shoulder would be a good idea really quick. We'll do another drawing here next class, but. So what do I have to get? So what's the uh, origin of supraspinatus? Supraspinous fossa. Supraspinous fossa. Where does it insert? Superior facet of the greater tubercle. And what do I have to remember? It goes underneath? The acromion. Underneath the acromion. Remember clinically that's a common site for impingement. Okay, common site for impingement. All right, what's, my, what's our next rotator cuff muscle that we see on a posterior view? Infraspinatus. Where does it originate from? Infraspinous fossa. And it's going to run out to what area? Middle, middle facet. Middle facet and basically just fan out from that direction right there. Okay, what's the main action of infraspinatus? Uh, lateral rotation. Lateral rotation. <laughs> lateral rotation. And then the last one is going to be? Uh, Terry's minor. minor. And where does that come from? Uh, okay. Yeah, it actually also blends with infraspinatus as well. So sometimes it'll come here and its insertion point is? Inferior, inferior facet of? Greater tubercle. Greater tubercle of humerus. And it runs out like this. Okay. And what's the action of Terry's minor again? Lateral rotation. Lateral rotation. Okay, and we have another muscle that's known as the little latissimus. And what is the little latissimus? Teres major. Where does that originate from? Yeah, so lateral border of the scapula. Where does it insert? All right, glad we're reviewing it. Medial lip of the bicipital groove, it's just a little bit more medial than latissimus is, okay? That's all you have to get. They actually both insert right next to each other, way on the inside of the axilla, okay? What's the action of, of uh, teres major? If you know lats, you know teres major. They both do the same thing, okay? And that would take you through most of those muscles right there. Uh, anything else we want to draw on this? I'm going to save the gluteal ones for next class when we do it. I feel like that's pretty much it. If I wanted to do a little bit more, I could get technical. Does anybody have this picture? Perfect, Dylan. Thank you, sir. Okay, we get a little bit more technical with a blow-up image right here, and we could talk about muscles of the suboccipital region. There are four suboccipital muscles. What are they? Rectus <laughs> <laughs> capitis, posterior major minor. <coughs> Obliquus capitis, <laughs> superior and inferior. So what do I get here? So the first muscle that I would draw is going to be rectus capitis, posterior minor. Where does it originate? Yeah, there is, remember, there is, no, there is no SP on C1. There's only a posterior tubercle, so that runs up. Where does it go? Yeah, I usually just say to the inferior nuchal line, technically it's in between, but it's kind of in that area. What originates SP of C2? Major. Rectus capitis posterior major is one of them, and it would run up and fan through like that. And then what is the other one that originates off of there? Obliquus capitis inferior. And why do we lie to you about this muscle? Does it have any capitis part to it? No, that's a lie, okay? Even though it's going to the cervical spine, it's not capitis at all. And then the last one that makes up the suboccipital area? Obliquus capitis superior, okay? Obliquus capitis superior. All right, if you can draw those muscles like that, you have a good understanding of what they do, how they run. You might want to talk about some of the innervations and away you go. So, your time to make it relevant. Pull out your pictures and draw them out. Tell me that doesn't look like fun. It does, actually. Okay, yeah.